For the metallic silver tones we will apply Lied Belcher, thin layers of it, but applying them lightly. Similar to what we did with the Death Ward Forest, the dark brown primer should be visible in the darkest points. Unlike with Death World Forest, we will not need to apply many layers of this paint. Stick with two thin layers, or maybe go to three, but only in the parts that are very very visible. Next I will apply your trusty Agrax Earthshade, yes you guessed it, however I thinned it down with a drop of water, just so that the wash changes the tone of the metal without darkening it. This will tie together all the colors and give the metal that dirty feeling Norgul loves so much. We want to apply this thinly barely visible in the surfaces and stronger on the deeper areas. Let's keep in mind that the Agrax Earth Shade is going to change the hue of all the metallic colors it's applied on. Once this wash is totally dry, we apply the next wash. In this case it's Reikenhof Nightshade. I will apply it only in the points where it needed to be the darkest. Both washes interact really cool with each other and gives them a much more menacing aspect. In the darkest point it will look almost black, however the color remains rich and saturated unlike with null oil, which is why I love mixing these two washes. It is very tempting to just spread this wash everywhere and see how it affects the miniature, but instead I advise you to wait for it to get dry, and then you can decide if you want more of it or if you got enough. Once again, we will wait for everything to be totally dry before moving on to the next color. The next color is going to be Stormhost Silver. This is the highlight. By jumping from the wash to the highlight, we are going to generate a big big contrast in many parts of the metallic parts of the models. This is going to give us a very sharp look, a very menacing look. This is something we want very often in the armies like Norgul or maybe Korn or all the other guys that are trying to be very scary.
Let's only apply this paint in the edges and the most exposed areas. If you feel like the transition between the edge highlight and the next color is too harsh, it probably means that there was too much Agrax earth shade on it. So I recommend that you paint a little bit of lead vercher just in the points where you want the transition to be smoother. Now for the cape and other pieces of cloth we're going to need Screamer Pink. Screamer Pink will be the base on which we will build all the rest of the pink colors and transitions. We will apply thin layers of this paint in all the cloth surfaces we find. To the cape and other cloth pieces we will apply some layers of pink horror. Similarly to what I did to Deadwood Forest, I will apply the layers of this paint but avoiding the deepest areas. I thin down the paint enough for it to feel transparent and start painting. Each layer covers less surface than the last one in order to build a transition to the darkest colors to the mid-tones. After about 5 layers, I move on to the Emperor's Children Pink and try to follow the same logic as I did with the Elysian Green.
I am looking for the more exposed areas, the areas that receive more light and they will be painted with this color. Once again, simply by thinning the paint a bit, I will build the color up from the transparency. Now I paint a mix of one part Emperor's Children and two parts white. This I am doing it to try to identify the points where I think the cape will reflect the most. And I am doing a similar process as I did with the ogreen camo on the green sections. Which means I apply it on the edges and on the most reflective points, where I want it to look as if the surface is reflecting the sunlight. For this part of the process I am purposely picking more areas than I should, because just as I did with the green I plan to cover some of it with Emperor's Children to both brighten up the pink and smoothen the gradient. Now we will go back to Emperor's Children Pink. This is going to be applied very thinly and only in the specific points where a highlight meets the midtone. This is going to smoothen out the transitions quite well. As you see, it's a similar process as we did with the green, but in this case we are applying it to a cloth, which tends to have a little bit more of areas of transition than we did before. We have to pay attention to these points because this is the key that brings the smoothness of the cloth texture and it's not a metal anymore or it's not a rock this has to be a little bit more delicate work Now that the cape and cloth areas are done, we can move on to the remaining colors. And for that I will see you on the next and last part of this tutorial.